So let's talk about this product. What does it do? How does it work? And where can you use it? So this tilt sensor uh, is an all-in-one IP65 box and it can send data in a line of sight around two miles and in an indoor environment around 1200 feet, uh, but depending on you know your situation. If it's a open plain field, you can get a, a much better range. And if it's like a lot of machines, walls and all, the range will reduce. It's just given for any wireless technologies out there. Uh, as far as the box goes, it's a pretty simple rectangle box. You On the back side, you can find uh, all the warnings, labels, and all those things. And on the top, it looks like this. Let's talk about its inside. So um, I already unscrewed all the box nuts, uh, screws there, sorry. And I'm gonna open it and just walk you through a few things there. So first of all, as soon as we open, you can see it got four batteries. Uh, all are regular AA batteries. Uh, there are two in the lid and two in the main box. Uh, you might see in our newer designs now, we are to putting all the batteries in the lid and putting all the electronics in the main box and make it a little bit more con less. Con right now it's cramped with all the electronics. There's a CPU right under the radio module. And this product particular unit is designed to work with batteries only. So that's why you see some of the parts missing, which were used for an uh, external power supply, which a connector will be here, a parallel connector, 2.1 millimeter. Where the hardware goes, the sensor is here, uh, the sensor which measures the tilt sensor. There's an LED also there, which blinks based on what is happening. So for example, uh, uh, if it sends the data, it will blink once. If it cannot talk to the sensor, it will blink twice and then once. Once, uh, twice to show you that is an error, and once that, hey, I sent the message, which contains the error code. If it blinks, three times means it cannot talk to the radio module then it won't do anything else we'll just three times wait for a few seconds three times again till it can talk to the radio module in this situation there might be something wrong with the radio module or some settings might have been altered so we can uh, talk all about that in other video but right now we can move on you will see there are two buttons here one is named as r or one is named as c r means reset and c means configure I might say them CFG or RST also in the video or in the tutorials. Anything else, uh, there's a switch, very important. Uh, people sometimes talk to us like, hey, this sensor does not work. The main reason is they did not turn it on. If you don't have the power on, it won't work. So right now it is uh, the switch position is away from the enclosure wall, which means it will be working with external power supply if you plug one. But right now we don't have that, so it won't work with it. If you move this one to the wall of the enclosure, it will work with batteries. Before I turn it on, uh, I'll talk about where we're gonna view the sensor data and all those settings. So for this particular test, I'm gonna in use Node-RED. I'll recommend also that everybody should be using Node-RED. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, it's a good tool, easy to use, and you can do almost anything you need to do with it. As far as the Node-RED setup goes, it's extremely straightforward. I'll walk you through. You will need to install NCD Enterprise Sensor Library here, which you can just go to install and type that and it will come up. I already have it installed. So once you have this library installed, you will see two of these nodes here under the NCD wireless gateway. So this is, I'm using it with a computer. Folks use our modems, which are USB, Ethernet, RS-232, RS-485, or they use our gate. If you are using NCD Gateway, you don't need to install library, and this all will be set up for you. But if not, you will have to set up your serial modem. So in this case, I'm gonna select serial to USB, and I'm gonna select my port 20, and my baud rate, and all those. And then I'll click update and deploy, if I had any changes. Right now, I don't have any changes, so I will not need. The second is, selecting your setting up your device so let's talk about some of stuff here which is sensor type if you select the sensor type sensor it means it, this node will be outputting data from all the type 47 sensor which are tilt. over here you can list down the mac addresses mac addresses which were printed on the back side or on the enclosure as we can see in this particular case this is the mac address of this device and I already had it powered on, so Node-RED knows about this sensor. So it listing down, hey, do you want to use this one? I'm like, yep, sure. So that's why it got this address. Key information here is, if you do not have this information here, it means the device will listen 
all the type 47 but if you select to this one it means the device will own to this particular for now i only have one so i'm going to select it but if you don't have you don't have to select it just leave it there are a few settings which you can configure into the device we'll talk about them once we'll select auto config wait for network configuration then destination app. some reason let's say you got 50 devices and you want to send all those free data to one gateway and you got 50 more you want to go to the gateway number two in the same build. In that case you can tell the device where it needs to send data generally I, we just want to send in the broadcast we're going to use the network id setting to build private networks so rather than sending the destination address we'll go and use network id you might say why wouldn't you use it there is it all goods works well and everything but there's one let's say you got the destination address stored here and your gateway get damaged stolen or anything it means all the devices which were supposed to send data to this one this gateway they will be sending it to it but there's no gateway they will keep retrying keep sending forever and you will never get the data in order to retrieve it you will have to physically go and reconfigure each device to send that to a new gateway you have it could be painful if you have 5000 of these installed book id is same thing but something you can control on the gateway side so let's say these sensor have 7ff that's default and your gateway got also 7ff and everything got data tomorrow something happens gateway is out of service you can get a new gateway and set the new gateway id to 7ff it will start getting data from all the devices so you don't have to change anything in the sensors node id and delay there's a mac address each device has one just like this one but it's long and not easy to read and all so folks generally use it to identify so they will um, set up their own it's a user configurable parameter mac address is not it is what it is forever so this one you can have one two three and then they, they put a big sticker on it so like oh this is number one this is number two twenty node id value go from zero to fifty five today is how frequently each device will send data by default, all or most NCD devices send data after every 10 minutes. If you want to apply these settings, you'll have to select this box and whatever you want to change. Right now, I'm not going to do it, so I'll unselect it. Power, I'll recommend leaving it alone. Right now, by default, you're going to send data at the maximum power. Retries, again, I will not recommend changing it. By default, is 10, and that's what it's going to This is a tilt sensor. It means it's going to have a roll and pitch angle. How does it work? It sends data in two ways. The one is it's gonna send data after the interrupt. But then let's say you install, you wanna send data on interrupt. What does that mean? Like the device is sitting there, sending data every 10 minutes, but in between, let's say something happened and the device got tilted by 20 degree, 10 degree, 50 degree, whatever. You want to get data immediately. Let's say it's installed on an electrical pole and you want to know what happened to the pole. So in that case, you can set the threshold and the device as soon as it reaches the angle you will get a data pack. There are tons of applications for it uh, one of them is the electric utility pole monitoring which we just talked over the angles and a roll and pitch you can change now let's get started and let's see how the data looks like and i'm not gonna go into configuration for now because there are a lot of other videos which already cover this topic um, first of all we have to turn power on the power is we're gonna push our button to left side on the wall of the enclosure. As soon as you do that, a device will send two packets. One will say, are you N? It will say, hey, I'm in a run pack. And then the run message will be followed by a data message. As you just saw there, the LED blinked a second ago when a device sent the message. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close this thing and I'm just gonna go and move this. As you can see, on the by default, the threshold value is 10 degrees. So I moved the device to 10 degree and I'm going to go back. So I'm going to go back 9, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10. So every time that happens, the device keeps sending the messages. We'll go ahead and open one of the messages here. And as you see, I was, my angle was not that much. So around 10 degree and the device said like, oh, there's a roll of 10 degree. Then it generated interrupt and sent the message immediately. Let's talk about some of these things. Node ID. As we talked about, everybody can give a unique number to this particular device, so that's Node ID. Firmware version, as we improve the firmware, hardware, software, generally we increment the firmware version to indicate what changes we made and keep a log of that. That The next one is battery voltage. 
uh, this is we got two double bat four double a batteries two are in series and then two or two are in parallel so the voltage is around 3.6 volt but there's an adc there and which reads 3.3 maximum as of now we got battery 99.64 percent almost 100 percent and the counter value every time device sends a data packet the counter value increase so if you see look at the next packet it should be 19 device type sensor type 47 we already established this from there's a chart here also and city support map where we can see. then we got the roll and pitch value which is the data coming on the sensor and then we got a this is very important the mac address of the sensor so by looking at the ea47 and if we look on this saw from this thing like the this device i will just gonna close the log and i'm just gonna see this device is extremely responsive as the angle changes the measurement uh, accuracy around for this device is plus minus two uh just given that which has a bit of a disadvantage if you are installing on a equipment which is around a lot and all and even though you will see that it will send data even though i'm not changing the angle but it's based on acceleration so that is one of the disadvantages of this device but then again the price point is something which is really low and it works for application which they're not moving like stationary objects like pole monitoring rack monitoring or there you want to make sure they don't fall and all those things warehouses can use this a lot so there are a lot of applications where it it is ideal for stationary object tilt monitoring. It is not ideal for the objects which are in motion and you want to measure tilt for those. So that is about mostly, that is about it for this particular device. Uh, it's a pr easy to work and you can get it from here. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach.